Hey guys, you're welcome to WTSWGS, what they say versus what God says. My name is Mafeng Kim. So on today's episode, we'll be discussing the topic, Do the Word, Part 3. Now in the past two episodes, we have discussed how there are different types of believers. And these types of believers have different ways that they accept the word or reject the word. Now, we have also looked at what happens when we ignore the word that comes to us. If you've not listened to those episodes, please do so promptly. Now, today we'll be looking at a big question. The question is, as a believer, why should I do the word of God? What is all the fuss about? What actually happens when you pay attention to what the word of God says and actually do it? What happens to you? Now, the first thing is, the word imparts wisdom to your spirit. 2 Timothy 3, from 15 to 17, in the New Century Version says, Since you were a child, you have known the scriptures which are able to make you wise. And that wisdom leads you to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. The word of God is the wisdom of God. And being the wisdom of God, the word comes to overcome the chaotic, the chaos in our lives, our chaotic lives, and set his purpose in our lives. Now, 1 Peter 2, 2 says, As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word of God, that ye may grow thereby. Salvation and the wisdom to grow in it is located in the word of God. Did you hear that? It says salvation, that's one. And the wisdom to grow in it is located in the word of God. The word of God has in it the inherent ability to make one wise, correct his perspective, and even to lead to salvation. It is by faith that a man gets saved, the salvation package that you receive. It is the word of God that helps you to receive it and helps you to grow in it. Now, number two, when the word of God comes, it opens our eyes up to the possibilities that are ours in Christ. Psalm 119 verse 18 says, Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. It is the word that shows us that eternal life, success, glory, beauty, love, joy, peace, and other wonderful things are ours in Christ. Till the day I read the word, I did not know that these things were my reality in Christ. Psalm 119 verse 30 says, The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Letting the word in helps you enjoy the full scope of your salvation package. It brings light. It enlightens you. It helps you see. That's what it says in simple English. All this giveth light. It helps you see. Number three, the word brings and builds faith. What does Romans 10 17 say? Romans, it says, So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. As in the KJV. Romans 4.20, on the other hand, says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, that is Abraham now, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So this tells you that there is strong faith and there is weak faith. There is small faith and there is big faith. And whatever level your faith is at, you can build it by the word. It is weak, you want it to become strong, the word. It is small, you want it to become big, the word. By doing the word, by practicing the word. The word ministers life. That's number four. It ministers life. John 6.63 in the Berean Literal Bible says, It is the Spirit giving life. The fresh, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. The same verse in the KJV says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It didn't say they contain spirit and they contain life, even though they do. It says they are spirit and they are life. They embody spirit, they embody life, and they bring this reality into your life as you do it, as you put it to work. Now, number five, it says the word of God teaches you to pray rightly. Ah, 
This one cannot be overemphasized because when praying, you need to come from the direction of the word. Ever before you pray about something, find out what does the word of God say about this thing. Then you align yourself to the position of the word of God. As Ecclesiastes 8, 4 says, where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? So go before God, not praying amiss, but in line with his will and his word for you as revealed in the word of God. Now, number six, the word brings direction to your life. It brings direction. Psalm 19 verse 8 says, the life maps of God are right, showing the way to joy. The directions of God are plain and easy on the eyes. Easy on the eyes means that it's very easy to see. You don't have to strain your eyes. It calls the word of God life maps. That's in the message translation. So regardless of what area of your life is lacking direction, God's word can supply the necessary direction. But it will only be of use if you put it to use. If you don't use it, you will never know what you're missing out on. Number seven, the word comprises our weapon of warfare. Ephesians 6, 17 says, And take the helmet of salvation, found where? In the word. And the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word. Which is the word of God. Verse 16 says, By which ye may be able to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, and neither are our spiritual battles. Yes, they may manifest physically, but they are spiritual. The devil throws multiple distractions, trials, and even ideas at God's children. And without the strength of their faith, without the right armory, we will not be able to maintain our victory in Christ. We may fall. Number eight, the word is the raw material for creation. A. The Bible says in Psalm 33 verse 6, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. That shows you that even God used his word to bring about desire change. Let there be light. Let there be this. Let there be that. And it was so. The word of God is a powerful tool for creation. Do not waste it. If God used it, take the hint. Use it. So what is it that you want? Find out what God's word says about it. Align yourself to the position of the word in faith and you will have what you desire. The list is not exhaustive. This first aid that we've treated, no, it's not exhaustive, but we can't keep going on and on and on. But this is just a symbol of the debt of wealth that we can enjoy in the word. If only we allow ourselves to practice the word. Job 23, 12 says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed his word more than my necessary food. Not the, un- not, not, not the unnecessary food now, not snacks. The very necessary food. He said, I have esteemed the word more than that. That was Job's mindset about the word. Little wonder why he held on to God even in the unlikeliest circumstance. So there is a pedestal that the word of God has to have in your life in order to produce the requisite fruits. The word of God is beyond mere words. It is the power of God that gives us the access to the full package of our salvation. Enjoy it. So as we close, pray this prayer with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I decide from today to saturate my spirit with the word of God daily. I choose to be filled with the word of God And I put it to practice in every aspect of my life. I declare that I am a doer of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. And so, fellow doers of the word, we've come to the end of today's episode, which is the last episode for this series. So if you were blessed by this message, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section. If you have not listened to the previous episodes, go back and do so. Please don't forget to reach out to us at the email in the description box to get a free copy of Apocalypsis, WTSWGS at gmail.com. You can also follow the previous episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Like, like, like it. Leave a comment and forward the link on all your social media handles. Thank you so much, guys.